presents you our leader, teacher, guide, messenger of the Almighty God, Pastor Gino Jennings. Greetings, brothers and sisters. As always, we bear witness there is no God but one. There is no God with him. There is no God besides him. There is no God equal to him. There is no God greater than him. And there certainly is no God other than he. We thank him for his divine wisdom and his perfect and infallible understanding of all things. A God that have no errors, a God that doesn't make mistakes, a God that's perfect in everything. To our viewers, this is our first webcast from our new international headquarters campus. We are presently in one of our gymnasiums and we're glad to come to you live, you that have a chance to log on and get the right information live like you've been getting when it's pre-recorded. Now let me say to all the church members around the world that may be logging on, I want to give viewers a chance to send in their questions that's not in the church. Many times church members are right in, but we get thousands of questions from around the world from people that's not in the church. And I don't want church members to flood the internet with questions, but we want to give viewers the chance to ask questions so we can give them a answer because I had the privilege to talk to a woman yesterday, 81 years old, and rejoicing over the telecast. But she had a very interesting question out of Memphis. There's many churches that have the same name as First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. A whole lot of churches. And she wanted to know was a church in Memphis same church that I was the overseer of and I asked her for the address and she told me and I told her no because there are churches and I want you hard head viewers to hear me good because churches are called church of the Lord Jesus Christ the name is not what make it the church you can have the name, but there's a doctrine, there's teaching that go along with the name. If that church believed that there are three gods, <laughs> that's not the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. If they believe that women can preach and women can be deacons, that's not the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. If I have a rainbow flag, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's not the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. If they justify same-sex marriages and the preachers perform them, that's not the church that started on the day of Pentecost. See, when you say church, of our Lord Jesus Christ, you're saying that's the church that started on the day of Pentecost at Jerusalem that Christ stand head of. When you deviate from the teaching of Christ, you're not the church. I just want you to be able to properly identify forgery. Mm hmm. Now, if you have a church that said that the church of our Lord Jesus Christ and believe you can divorce or divorce and remarry, that's not the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. If they say that flesh and blood is in heaven or flesh and blood came from heaven or Trinity, 
just got a letter from a man that says he's an apostle. <coughs> I was reading it before Dan tamped the pulpit over to me. He says he's an apostolic Trinitarian. <laughs> and he referred me to the scripture that there are three <laughs> that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost. And he misquoted it. For the Bible says in these three are one. It didn't say if those three agree. Mm -mm. That scripture says that three are one. The Father is God. In fact, yeah. <laughs> Father is Jesus' title. Word is Jesus' title. Because the word made flesh, then after he made flesh, the flesh took on the word's name. And the name of the word is Jesus. And then the word which is God got in flesh and preached by the power of the word that was in him. Now you got the title of God, Holy Ghost, which means comforter or keeper. Not three separate gods or trinity. Trinity is a myth. That originated out of Rome. And they're going to go from Rome and Rome right into hell. All right, viewers. You get a chance to send your questions in live, God willing. I think we already have some. And then I'll get what we have. And But you follow me in the Bible and we'll go right to the Bible. All right, Dan, what do you have? And where is it from? Uh, we can't tell where this is coming from. But this person says, I have the Holy Ghost, the man I married. Don't, but we were going to an apostolic church. You didn't hear about marrying unequal and being unequally yoked to a Pastor Jennings. I uh, spoke about this. Uh, she said, I repent, or she said, I repented. Do God honor my marriage? Am I forgiven? So, what's the question? I have the Holy Ghost, the man I married, don't, but we're going to an apostolic church. The question really is, does God honor her marriage? Because now she's probably married to this. Uh, all right. Well, if you are already married, one is a believer. And one is not. Right. Give me the seventh chapter mm -hmm. of the book of 1 Corinthians. Corinthians. And I say to the unbeliever, if you wish to do well there, don't depart. That's right. Listen at this. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And we'll start reading at verse 12. Follow me. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. All right. If any brother. If any brother. Hath a wife that believeth not. Have a not, wife that's not a believer. Now hold it. The moment it says, if any brother. That means someone that's in the church, right. in the body, mm -hmm. baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and have the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking in town. Mm -hmm. What happened? If any brother has a wife that believes And not, yet he has a wife that's an unbeliever, not saved, don't right. have the new birth, mm -hmm. not in the church, mm -hmm. but yet they already married. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she be pleased to dwell with him. What? Let him not put her away. You can't get rid of her because she's not saved. Right. And she can't get rid of him because she's not saved. And the woman which hath an husband. And the woman that, notice they got both of them. Right. Or they got to put the man in prison and put the woman in prison, turn the key and left you there until one of you fall out dead. That's right. Eh? And the woman which hath an husband. Woman that have a husband. That believeth not. That don't believe. And if he be pleased to Think dwell. Think of it. Yeah. Notice the language. Right. If he be pleased. If he be pleased. To do what? To dwell with her. If he want, listen, he may not believe in God at all. Right. Or rather, he believe in God and she may be an atheist. That's right. But because she's an atheist, he can't say, well, I want to get a saved one. Right. Mm -hmm. So he trade that Volkswagen in and get a Volvo. That's right. He can't do that. No. He can't do that at all. No, no. Then the Bible's dealing with Mary, one in the body, and one that's not in the body. Why is the Bible dealing with this? Because many of you held deserving bishops in Pentecostal and in so-called apostolic or apostolic in other religions are teaching the people 
that if both of you were sinners when you got married and then one of you got saved the one now that's a Christian can get rid of the one that's a non-Christian right. that's a lie that the devil has been telling through your pastor that's right and your pastor's lying to you that's right and this stuff is being preached all over but thank God the word of God is here that's it. to put everything in check and put everything back in order. That's right. You know the Apostle Paul said, I set all things in order when I come. That's right. What did he say? And the woman which hath an husband. The woman that got a husband. That believeth not. And the husband is not a believer. All right, woman. You may be born of the water and of the spirit. You're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. Know there's one God. And your husband is of the devil. A pure premium 93% octane devil. That's right. High grade devil. That's right. <laughs> huh? And he may not believe in God at all. at all. Listen at this. And the woman which has a husband that believeth not. Woman that have a husband that's an unbeliever. And if, if he be pleased to dwell if, with her, if, if he want to stay there, let her not leave him. Wait a minute. He's an unbeliever and you're a believer. Right. And if he wants to stay there and yet he's still an unbeliever, that he, hurt. you can't get rid of him because he's an unbeliever. That's right. If he chooses to stay there and he's uh, an unbeliever, mm -hmm. then let the unbeliever stay there. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then the don't notice how this contradict Bishop. Oh, yeah. This contradict the apostolics and the Pentecostals. Listen. And the woman which has a husband that Now we got the woman. If she got a husband that's an unbeliever. And if he be pleased to dwell with her. If he don't want to run and leave out because of her belief, then what? Let her not leave him. All right. So any preacher that give you counsel yeah. to do otherwise, mm -hmm. you're being counseled by the servant of Satan. That's right. All right. What's the next question? This question comes from uh, Tampa, Florida. Uh, All right. It says, when the holy writings speak about devils in plural, yet we read in Jude that those angels that, were, that left their first estate, which, was, which were holy, uh -huh. are reserved in prison. Can you please talk a little about these devils, quote unquote, and evil spirits that we read about in certain passages of the Holy Scriptures? Yes, I do that. I know. Now, uh-huh. I know this is a deep topic, this person says, but the Lord made you a deep sea diver. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother Gina. All right. Let's go to work in this. Now, preachers have said when the Bible pluralizes devils, and people may be filled with devils, like the man Legion. Legion. It says, for we are many. Yeah. Preachers have said that Legion wasn't just Satan, but it was Satan and the fallen angels. No, it was not. Oh. No, it was not. Right. All right, give me the book of Jude now. In the book of Jude, chapter I want one. to show you the location of the fallen angels mm -hmm. and where they are right now. That's right. Eh? Let's lock this down with the Bible. In the Come book on, of Jude, son. In Jude, chapter 1, we're at the sixth verse. All right. And the angels. Wait a minute. And the angels. Which kept not their first estate. And let's remember it was a whole third that was put out. That's right. An entire third was cast out. That's right. Because they took sides with Satan and war broke out in heaven and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. Thank God, but the dragon didn't prevail. Mm -hmm. And when the dragon was put out, uh, the apostle declared, Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. Amen. All right. And the angels which kept not their first estate. What happened? But left. They left. Their own habitation. Why did they leave? Because God put them out. That's right. And when God put you out, you can't stay where God put you out. That's you right. just got to go. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. He has reserved. All right. Now, the angels that was put out, they are not roaming around nowhere. No. Nowhere. They're not in purgatory, they're not in heaven, they're not roaming up and down the earth either. That's 
That's right. All right. He has reserved. God got them reserved where? In everlasting chains. Where are they? In everlasting chains. How long is those chains? Underdark, everlasting. Everlasting chains. Everlasting. They're in prison. Right. What? Under darkness. Under darkness. Unto the judgment of the great day. Now the angels that was put out of heaven, they are reserved in the chains of darkness, and they're going to be there until the great day. And that great day is the coming of the Lord. Right. Now there's going to come a time that the church is going to judge the angels. That's right. And the angels that's going to be judged are the backsliding angels, right. which was cast out for taking sides with Satan. That's right. Now when the Bible talk about devils, Glory to God. We're in the book of St. Mark now. Follow me quickly. Mark chapter 5 and we'll start reading at verse 3. All right. Who? Uh, at verse 1. And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. Uh -huh. And when he was come out of the ship. Yeah. Immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Notice. Spell spirit. S-P-I-R-I-T. First, first is singular. Right. Notice it says a man with, with the unclean spirit. spirit. Right. You know what it says? That's a right. unclean spirit. I want to itemize this itemize. and take it apart. Come on, son. Who had his dwelling among the tombs? Uh -huh. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Then what? Because that he had been bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, uh -huh. and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. Yeah. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying mm -hmm. and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. And said what? And cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee? What do I have to do with you? Jesus, thou son of the most high what God, is it? I adjure thee by God that thou What did Jesus God. say? For he said unto him, come out of the man. Come out of the man. Thou unclean spirit. Notice he keeps singularizing it. That's right. Thou unclean spirit. All right, real quick. And he asked him, what is thy name? What's your name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion. My, la my name is Legion. For we. What, what do the word Legion mean? We are many. That's right. We are what? We are many. But when Jesus told him to come out, what did he say? Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And what did the Spirit say? My name is Legion, for we are many. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Right. Now, Satan is one. That's right. Yes, he is. But there's many attributes or characteristics of this one. That's right. He produced a whole lot. Oh, yeah. That one devil That's right. can have you with the spirit of adultery, yeah. the spirit of fornication. Yeah. Yeah. Can be a lying spirit. That's right. Can be a spirit of idolatry. That's right. There's a lot of attributes to the one spirit, the devil. That's right. And God wanted all of it. All, all of it. Yeah. Everything the devil had in that man. That's right. The devil want all of it to come out of him. So yes, the devil, there's one devil, but many attributes to the one and devil. And all the devils besought him. What? And all the devils besought him. All, now here, here, listen. <laughs> all the devils besought all him. All the devils. All the devils. But it wasn't a group of devils that was cast out of heaven. No. Yeah, here, yeah, preachers, can you, can you sort go through ahead. that? Go ahead, go ahead. It wasn't a group of devils that was cast out of heaven. No. It was one devil. That's right. And that was the dragon. That's it right. was not dragons. That's right. Hallelujah to God. That's right. It was the great red dragon. That's right. The old serpent. The old serpent. Called the devil. The devil. One devil, but many characteristics and many attributes from that one spirit. That's so it. that's what that is. That's right. All right, Dan, come on. This question says, uh, what specific abilities does a man possess that the woman lacks with regard to scriptural decree that women don't belong in the pulpit? What is that question again? What specific abilities does a man possess that the woman lacks with regard to the scriptural decree that women don't belong in the pulpit? Position. Right. Give me the book of Genesis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Position and failure. Mm -hmm. Give me the book of Genesis, then I'll get the book of Timothy and we'll see who the first one fell. Right. All right, give me Genesis 1 26 and 1 27. Genesis 1 26. Read quickly. 
and 127. All right. And God said, let us make man in our image. Now, God made man in his image. Right. And being that God made man in his image, even God bears the title, he. Right. And God bears the title, him. God never bears the title, she. That's right. I want you to get this, so you that sang that song, he's everything, he's everything to me, he's my mother, that's a lie. That's a lie. You's a liar, you're singing a lie. That's right. God ain't never called himself a mother. Right. Uh -uh. No, 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 God don't bear the title female. No, because no. when God made man, man take on the characteristics of God and man was made in God's image. Right. Right. Listen. And God said, let us make man in our image. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Let them have authority. Over the fish of the sea and, and over the fowl of the air what else? and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And what? So God created man. So God made man. In his own image. In his own image. In the image of God. In the image of who? In the image of God. In the image of God created he him. Now, let me show you the difference between the man and the woman. Mm -hmm. Notice the Bible says that the woman was made for the man. That's right. Not the man for the woman. That's right. Now, when the Bible said the woman was made for the man, the woman supposed to submit to authority, That's supposed right. to submit to the man. That's why the Bible says, wives, submit yourselves to your husband. Now look at the church. The church bears the same title, woman, wife, bride. And God bears the title, husband. So now the church got to submit to its husband. And the husband of the church, or the father of the church, or the Lord of the church, it's God. That's right. So just like the woman got to submit, thank God to the man, the church got to submit to God. Right. So why would a man submit to a woman preacher? Mm -hmm. right. She's usurping authority right. over the man. Over the man. A listen, here, here. If a man submitting to a woman preacher, that is equal to God submitting to the church. That's right. And God don't submit to the church. That's right. Eh? That's Hallelujah. Right. Glory to God. The church, I said, must, must submit to God. That's right. All right, give me the book of Timothy, if you will. First Timothy chapter 2. You see, a lot of folk don't see the revelation in this. Right. They don't see how God fixed this thing up. You bad mind. Look at her. After God put Adam in a deep sleep, the woman was taken from the rib of man, and then the woman was brought back to the man that she came from. Right. Now, here come the elements of the church came from the side of God, right. or rather the side of the Son of Man, the Son of God, the body, Christ Jesus. They pierced him in the side. Out came blood and water. Thank God in here. And to get in the church, you got to have water. That's the only way you're going to get the blood. That's you right. got to repent of your sins to go down in water in the name of Jesus Christ and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now that makes you part of the bride. And that you be, and when you become part of the bride, meaning a part of the church, a member of the church, now you got to submit to the bride's husband. That's right. And the husband of the church is God. That's the right. The Bible said we have one husband man. That's right. Huh? One husband man. All right, listen at this. First Timothy chapter 2, we're at verse 11. Uh -huh. Let the woman learn in silence. Let the woman learn in silence. With all subjection. With all subjection. But I suffer not a woman I to suffer teach, not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man. Read quickly. But to be but to in be silence, silence for, for Adam was first formed. For Adam, listen at this. Adam was first formed. Adam was first formed. Then Eve. Then Eve. And Adam was not deceived. Listen, that's the way the church was set up. Right. The Son of God came before the church, start on the day of Pentecost. That's right. The Son of God came before the church started on the day of Pentecost. Why? Because you need a sacrifice to get the church. That's right. Without a sacrifice, you couldn't have no church. That's right. So he come along tabernacling in a body that consists of blood. He came by blood and water. And, water. and in that body that had blood and water, spirit was in there. And now we come along, have to take on the same thing that that body had when it walked earth. Spirit. Water and blood. 
Thank God when I get the water and blood, I'm baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. When I get the Spirit, I'm filled with the Spirit, by the Spirit, from the Spirit, which is the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. So God never had given woman the authority to use up her authority over man. Right. So God have never called and sent a woman to preach the gospel. Because see, look at this now. Think of it. In the Old Testament, when a woman have a male child, after the male child is born, she's supposed to be home for 33 days. Right. But what if God said if she have a female, she's to be home, I believe, about 66 days. But God tells the preacher, you got to be instant. That's right. In season and out of season, you got to keep going. That's right. it. You just got to keep preaching. That's right. Amen. So, yes, uh, it's not given to the woman to have authority over the man. An apostle is one with authority. A prophet is one with authority. The bishop is one with authority. And God did not give that to the woman. Right. And this is not male show for chauvinism. No, this no. is nothing but biblical law That's it. that our heavenly father put in place. That's right. And I know you hell bound devils that want to alter that law, but God won't let you. That's right. Eh? That's right. I say God won't let you. Yeah. All right, Dan, what else you have? <laughs>